There's probably something even better out there that I haven't found or thought about yet. But I think, at least for us this fall, that this is going to work out pretty good. I think it's going to give us some really nice... What's up, Lazy Dog fam? I hope everybody out there is having an awesome day. On today's video, we're going to try to solve the problem of fitting a square peg in a round hole. More specifically, how do we set up a drip irrigation system on a round bed and still get adequate coverage? I think I've got an idea. I think it's going to work. So we're going to do that and hopefully get some more fall planting done in our raised bed plot here. And then once we're done with that, we'll go over there to the in-ground plot that we planted uh, about 10 days ago now and see how that one is doing. But before we try to solve that geometry problem, let's talk about an issue that several of our viewers have mentioned, and that has to do with this soil settling down in these beds. So when we filled all these beds with those composted wood chips and then topped them off with some of our native soil, fertilizer, compost, and some potting soil, we tried to fill them almost all the way to the top because we knew some settling was gonna occur. Just didn't know how much. And in some of these beds, it hasn't been that much so far, but in some of these bigger beds here, they're starting to settle down a decent amount like you see there. So we knew they were going to settle some, we just didn't know how much. And there was really nothing we could do about it because we filled these things and then it was planting time. So we didn't have a whole lot of time to wait to see if they're going to settle and then kind of top them off some more. Also, we haven't had a hard rain here in a long, long time. Now, after we filled them, I did run an overhead sprinkler in here several times, but I can't simulate a hard rainfall with that, which will probably cause them to settle even more. So there wasn't really anything we could do about it in these beds that we needed to go ahead and get planted. These beds that were getting transplants that were ready to go in the greenhouse. So whatever settling happens there, it just happens. And then we'll just layer some more stuff on top of it whenever these crops in here are finished. Now this bed here the stuff that's going in here we're probably still about a week out from those transplants being ready and a week out from being ready to plant any spinach in here so we could top this one off a little bit because it has settled considerably more than the others have so now let's try to solve this problem of how do we set up drip irrigation in these round beds here now in these other beds that are rectangular shape, it's really, really easy. And if you had a square bed, it would kind of be the same. So we treat this just like a smaller in-ground garden plot and run the rows, the length of the bed, have our drip tape running that direction as well. But in these round beds here, it's not quite so simple. Because if we run tape in here, all the tape is not going to be the same length. And how do we make sure we get enough tape in here to get adequate coverage watering everything in these beds? So as old Carl Childers would say, I've studied on it quite a bit. I've thought about quite a few different options as far as the best way to water these round beds. Now, one thing I didn't do was research online the best way to water round beds. I probably should have looked that up, but I think I found a pretty good way to do it. Now, the first thing I thought about was just using some micro sprinklers and just overhead watering these beds in the front. And we may install those in the future, but that's not what we're going to use this fall. So between these round beds here, we have mainline tubing running from bed to bed and so i thought about coming in here attaching to that mainline tubing that's buried there i could find it pretty easily making a little vertical riser there and having a micro sprinkler to water these beds overhead but the more i got to thinking about the micro sprinklers i realized that the water output using those on these round beds was going to be a lot more than the water output from the drip tape on all the other beds so if i turn the water on the entire system i would have to then come back out here shortly after turn those micro sprinklers off and then still let the tape on the other beds run for a while and that's not that great of an automation to have if you got to keep coming back out here and keeping an eye on things so i wanted to have something a little more automated that could run the same length of time as all the other beds 
So what I decided on was using this stuff right here called drip tubing. Now, a lot of you have probably seen this before. This is different than drip tape. So drip tubing is like this little micro tubing that has holes in it. I'll show you a little more close up when we get to installing some of it in a minute. So not the same as drip tape, but kind of the same concept. The tape lays flat when there's no water running through it and then it inflates. It has emitters or holes punched in it every so often along the tape. Same thing with the tubing here. You can get this with a six inch hole spacing, I think eight inch or 12 inch. I've got the six inch here. They had it on Drip Depot site in black and brown. I just went with the brown here because I thought it was easier to see. So drip tubing it is for the round beds, but how are we going to configure this to get a good coverage over that entire bed? And so now I'm going to show you how we go from this to this and then to this. So in all our rectangular beds where we're using drip tape, we use this setup here to connect to our vertical mainline riser, just an elbow, a valve to turn each bed on and off. And then we use a T that way we can run main line from one side of the rectangular bed to the other and then drip tape that way. But in this case of the round beds, we're not going to do it that way. We're going to skip this T part here. So we just have the elbow and the valve because we're going to run our main line this way as opposed to this way. So we're going to run it all the way to the end of that bed. So first thing we need to do is get this elbow installed onto this riser here and then we can run some main line. Okay, now we've got our elbow and our valve installed here. We're gonna push a piece of main line all the way onto that valve there. And then down here on the other end of the bed. Cut the main line like that. And then we'll cap it off on these end caps. Now when we're installing drip tape, we use these row starts to connect the drip tape to the main line. And then we use these row ends here to terminate the end of the tape. But with this drip tubing here, this stuff I showed you earlier, we use some different connections. So the connections from the tubing to the main line are these little barbs right here. And then to terminate or to plug the end of the drip tubing we just use these goof plugs same thing we use to plug the main line tubing here if we're done with a particular hole or want to change our row spacing now i am using a slightly different hole punch for this drip tubing got this online from drip depot the problem i have with this one this one works really well but the holes that it punches in this main line in my in-ground gardens, when I try to plug those with these goof plugs here, they don't plug it all the way. So something has me thinking this little puncher right here is a hair bit bigger than it needs to be for these fittings. So I got this one from Drip Depot. This one works really, really well. Kind of the same concept as this one, just a little smaller. So let me show you how I've been doing this. Now, if you wanted to be real exact with this, you could come out here and use a Sharpie and mark along this mainline tubing here, equal distances. So you've got the tubing equally spaced apart. I haven't been doing that yet. I can get it pretty close without measuring it. So I start out by just kind of picking out a spot in the middle here. That's where I'm gonna put my first hole. So we're gonna do it like that and punch a hole there. And then I'm gonna go as close as I can to this valve here. I'm gonna punch one more hole then I'm going to split the difference between those two that's one right there and then I'm going to come to the very end punch a hole and then come between the middle and the end and punch one more so it's not exact but it's pretty close so then we take our tubing here, we insert this little barb into one end of the tubing, and then we insert that into the hole, just like that. And I'll come back here, and I'll just cut this tubing with scissors right before the end of the bed. I'll get us another barb, put this one in this hole, and then pull that out straight, 
cut that too. And then for this shorter link here, stick it in there and then pull it straight, cut that right there. So we've got all of them installed that are going to run this way now. And the only issue I see with this drip tubing thus far is it's got a good bit of memory in it. Now you can kind of work with it a little bit and get it to lay flat. But as you saw earlier, that's why I use the bricks. I did those others yesterday and then I put bricks on them to kind of hold them down and help them lose their memory a little bit. That does seem to help somewhat. So yeah, it doesn't lay flat real good in the beginning. I think if you were doing longer rows, I don't think it would be a problem with these shorter pieces they want to curl a little bit but putting something heavy on them for a day or so seems to straighten them out so now we just come in here with our little goof plugs and we just plug the end of each of these tubing lines really really easy and now for the other side to get lines running in this direction i'm going to do basically the same thing so i'm going to go in between these lines on this side so i'm going to kind of pick the middle between here, punch a hole, same thing right here, punch a hole, and right there. And then we'll just start connecting the tubing on this side of the main line. So, one line there, get it straight, cut it, and we'll just plug these up like we did those others. And that's it. So it took me a minute when I did the first one yesterday to kind of figure it out, but once I realized how I was going to do it, it really goes by in no time. Now I'm going to go get some bricks and lay on these to straighten them out. We're not going to plant this bed today. We're going to plant those that I set up yesterday where hopefully there's not as much curl and memory in this drip tubing here. So I added bricks on top of that one we just finished to hopefully straighten out those lines a little bit. This one over here still has bricks on it from yesterday. And I've taken the bricks off these two right here. And the brick trick seemed to help a little bit. Not a whole lot. You can see those lines are still wanting to pop up a little bit there. I'm sure I can get some staples and I probably will just kind of pin that down on the soil there so it's not popping up. Still just has too much memory in it. So is this the absolute best way to set up drip irrigation on round garden beds? I don't know, probably not. There's probably something even better out there that I haven't found or thought about yet. But I think, at least for us this fall, that this is gonna work out pretty good. I think it's gonna give us some really nice coverage over the entire round bed and allow us to plant these round beds really, really densely. So I just went and hooked up the water hose and I turned the water hose on here so y'all can see what it looks like when it's dripping and it looks like it's putting out a decent amount of water there every six inches along that tubing which is probably going to be pretty good considering how thick we're planning on planting these beds so we'll see over this fall and winter growing season just how much we like this drip tubing here and if we do like it a lot we may start using it more in some of these other raised beds i still think drip tape is the way to go for a larger in-ground plot but if I really like the drip tubing, I could see where I could use it instead of tape in some of these larger raised beds here. The fittings and connecting everything is definitely a lot cheaper and simpler with the drip tubing as opposed to the tape. We'll just see over time how they compare. So now that we've got the watering set up in those round beds, minus the staples, which we're definitely gonna have to have, let's do some planting. So we're gonna try to plant three of those beds today we're going to do direct seeding in two of them and then we're going to put some transplants from the greenhouse in another one so as far as what we're going to be planting i've got three varieties of beets here i've got red beets white beets and gold beets so we're going to plant beets in half of one of those round beds the other half of that bed we're going to plant some of this chard here some red chard yellow chard one of the beds is going to get some watermelon radishes. It's been a long time since I've grown any watermelon radishes, but they're fun to grow and they're pretty tasty as well. So we're going to fill up a bed with watermelon radishes. And then the one that's getting transplants, they're small, but I think the root ball is big enough to transplant. We've got celery and parsley in the greenhouse that I'm going to put in the third one. 
So let's start off in this first bed here with our watermelon radishes. And I'm gonna use this little handy dandy tool right here called a cobra head. Now I've had this thing forever and I, I know the guy who invented them. His name's Noel Valdez or Valdez, I think. He's up in Wisconsin. It's a really good tool, but I've never really used it that much in my in-ground gardens because it's you know short handle tool, but it's gonna be perfect for planting some of these seeds in these raised beds. So I'm just gonna come along to the side of where this drip tubing is running here. We're gonna scrape us out a few little planting furrows. Just like that. Now if I was planting something that didn't have a big root like these radishes are eventually gonna have, I'd probably plant on both sides of this tubing here. But given the space that these radishes are gonna need as they get bigger, I think I'll just plant on one side of it here. If I was doing something like greens, mustard greens, arugula, something like that, I'd probably plant on both sides. Now we've got our little furrows made. I think I've got 250 seeds here, which should be enough. I'm bad about planting these radishes too thick and then they don't ever get as big as they're supposed to get. So I'll try to spread them out this time. Give each one a little space so they can get the full size. We're gonna put them in here, I don't know, an inch or two apart. We can always come in and thin them out a little later if we need to. Now we've got our seeds in there, we'll just take our little cobra head and cover them up. Now for this bed here, we're gonna do kind of the same thing. We're gonna make some furrows, but we're gonna plant some different stuff in here. So I think I'm gonna do, see I've got five lines on this side, so probably beets on this half and then Swiss chard on this half. So we'll start out with chard over here. We'll do two rows of red chard and two rows of yellow chard. And maybe some of you already know this, but beets and chard are in the same family. They look very, very similar. When they grow out, beet greens look a lot like chard greens. You can eat beet greens as well. Beets and chard are what they call multi-germ seeds, which means each seed Will actually sprout anywhere from two to three plants a lot of times you can thin them out if you want to or you can just kind of let them grow crowded a lot of times i don't thin them but you can if you want to and now over here for the beets this is a lot fewer beets than i normally plant i like beets but i don't love beets i do love growing beets we usually end up giving a bunch of them away brooklyn's not too crazy about them i do like to have them from time to time so I'm just gonna plant a little bit here as opposed to what we would normally plant a whole row in the in-ground garden. So the red beet I really like is called Merlin. It's a really sweet one. And then we've got the orange beet, Boldor, although the seed packet doesn't show that it's orange. And then this white beet, Avalanche, although the seed packet doesn't show that it's white. The white beets are a lot less earthier than the red beets. The Orange beets or yellow beets are a little less earthy than the red beets. Now, if I had to pick a favorite, the orange or gold ones are my favorite. So I think I'm gonna plant more of those. I think I might go in this center row here, plant these. Now you can find some beets that are monogerm, meaning they only form one plant, but I just plant these multi-germ ones and let them kind of crowd in here they kind of push each other out the way i usually don't thin them out but you can if you want consistently sized beets get these covered up and we'll be ready to go to the next bed and then for this third bed where we're going to be putting some parsley and celery today these celery transplants and the parsley transplants aren't quite as big as i'd like them to be but i think they're big enough and i got to start cleaning up my greenhouse and getting ready to fill it full of fig cutting so i'm going to plant them they got a pretty decent root ball established just the green on top there isn't quite as big as i normally wait for it to get before i transplant it now i was in lowe's the other day and i noticed they had some really nice looking celery transplants there it didn't say what variety they were but they look really nice so if you don't have the time to grow out your own celery seedling, seedlings you might be able to find some locally and it don't take a whole lot of celery plants to 
be enough for a family. Last year we grew a whole row and it was a whole 30 foot row and it was way more than enough. I'm just gonna plant half this bed here today. And also last year we did a single cut on them so we let them get full size and then just cut them. I think I may do some kind of cut and come again with these. Just pull off a couple stalks at the time and let it keep growing. So we'll start with the celery and I think I'm just gonna go a six inch spacing on these. So just basically putting a plant right by every hole in that drip tubing there. I have to be careful and fish these out with my knife. Just put those right there. Some of them are a little bigger than the others. So I'm gonna pick the bigger ones that we're gonna plant here today. All right, so we was able to get 12 celery transplants here, which should be more than enough for us, especially if we do a cut and come again on them. Now let's do some parsley over there. So you can see our parsley transplants here. They're not huge, but they got some really nice roots on them. So I think they're just fine to put in the ground like this. So I'll probably do the same thing like I did with the celery. Just gonna go one plant per emitter, which will give us a six inch plant spacing on these. All right, all right, all right. Got that one done and I'm pretty happy with how that looks. I think it'll look a lot better once we get those lines pinned down to the soil there. That's gonna be some good groceries in that bed. That means three more down today and only three more to go in this new raised bed plot. So I'll let that water run for a while so that drip tubing can soak in those seeds we just planted, keep those transplants happy, and also help to keep our carrot beds moist. So we planted these two or three days ago. I've been running the drip on them when I'm feeding this other stuff, but I've also been coming in here in the morning and in the afternoon with a watering wand and just kind of giving a light splash, keep everything moist. They're not gonna germinate in three days, but hopefully in about four more days, we start seeing something with our carrots and parsnips. Now let's take a stroll over here and check on our in-ground plot where we have the rest of our cool season veggies planted. So with the exception of those pepper plants over there, Titus and I planted this entire plot about seven or eight days ago. And because it's still really, really dry around here, we've been having to run this drip system a lot. So I've been running it all night, every other night, and I'm not getting any oversaturation with the soil. These plants are drinking it right up because it's so dry around here. There's not a lot of ground moisture, but we've been able to keep most all these plants happy. I've got close to a 100% transplant survival rate. I think the only one I lost would be this little cabbage plant right here but all the rest of them you know several hundred plants are doing really really well so in these two rows we've got our broccoli we've got green magic over here and the imperial over here both of those rows are starting to put on some nice new growth i think the imperial looks a little better than the green magic at this point it seems to be growing just a hair bit faster a cauliflower didn't have much transplant shock. It started growing pretty quick. A lot of growth considering these have only been in the ground a week. Same thing with the Brussels sprouts here. Although those are sometimes a little slower to take off, we've got at least two new leaves on there from when I put these in the ground. Now I haven't really started feeding these plants besides that NatureSafe 855 that we put in the furrow at planting, except for this row here. This is that megaton cabbage. It's supposed to get really, really big and we're gonna see just how big we can get it. So when I cleaned out the nesting box and my chicken tractor the other day, I sprinkled it alongside the row here, give it a little extra pop of nitrogen and hopefully that'll help grow us a monster, monster cabbage. And then on this last row, we've got more cabbage. We've got the Bravo variety on the first part of the row and then capture on the back half of the row. I think the Bravo's looking a hair bit better than the capture at this point. Maybe outpacing it a little bit, but still a long way to go before we can make any real comparisons. So all the fall transplants we've planted so far are looking really good. Seem to be 
taken off really well not a lot of transplant shock there and that's a good thing because we want to try to get a lot of growth on these before we get our first frost usually towards the end of november now the frost down here aren't really bad but every now and then we can get one that will sting the plants pretty hard but if we've got some larger plants it usually doesn't bother them as much and I hope you've enjoyed seeing all the fall planting over the last couple weeks of videos. Still got lettuce in the greenhouse that's not quite ready. Still got some mustard and pak choy in the greenhouse that's not quite ready. Still waiting on it to cool off a little bit more before we direct seed spinach in one of these beds. We'll wait until November for the onions and garlic. We do have some cool season cover crops we need to plant. We might do that on the next couple of videos. Try to go ahead and get those in the ground so they can get established before we get a hard frost. And let me know in the comments below what you think about my round raised bed irrigation setup there. You think that's just way too overcomplicated or do you think it's kind of nifty? And as always, if you're watching on YouTube and you're wanting links to some of the products we use in this video, you can find those in the description below, along with affiliate links to a lot of other companies we use in our gardens here at Lazy Dog Farm. Even got some coupon codes for some of those companies so you can take advantage of those discounts. Don't forget to go check out our website, lazydogfarm.com, where we've got several irrigation blogs talking about the complete raised bed, complete in-ground, and complete fruit tree watering systems that we use also got recipes over there hats shirts all kind of good stuff if you did enjoy the video be sure to subscribe hit that notification button like and share and we'll see you next time right here at lazy dog farm well mm -hmm. by the beauty of your life